Hello, Dharma Circle. Swati here, the Embodied Dharma Coach. Let's dive in for our Wednesday Live. I'm going to share with you my steps, my formula for creating a $90,000 course launch. This last fall, I launched my Embodied Jyotish Certificate course, and it was a huge success. It ended up being a 90K launch. Um, and I did it all without a huge audience, without a massive newsletter list, no sleazy sales. Uh, I didn't burn out. I didn't have to force my body to perform. And I didn't even have a lot of signups. And yet it was a hugely successful course and um, a very powerful launch. So let me tell you how I did it. This is my formula. And this is exactly what happened in this process. Um, over the course of many months, uh, typically a launch process is about a month long. But in this case, I changed some of the rules in order to have more success. Having a six-figure business and having a successful course launch um, is easier than you think. It's not rocket science, but there are things that you have to be doing in order to get this level of response and to have a prosperous, successful course launch. Um, right pricing, right structure are crucial. You also need to understand how to do a proper promotion cycle. So we're going to go through some of that today. You'll need to understand um, what your audience wants and your course will not be successful. It will not be prosperous if you don't have that in place before you do anything else. I've created many courses over the last six years. I've had um, a Dharmic business sharing my gifts and wisdom for well over a decade. I started creating courses um, within the first few years of my business. Um, I noticed that single sessions just weren't going to work for me. I wanted to share with more people at once. I wanted to give this knowledge and wisdom to groups rather than individuals. And I noticed that in sessions, I was saying the same thing over and over again. And I realized, let's just do a Jodish course. And that way I don't have to repeat myself and everyone can learn together and it'll be easier for me. And uh, it will also support the client in learning and growing more. So I started creating courses and, and then embodied, uh, embodied therapy, uh, expressive art therapy courses, blending that with Jyotish. Um, I created my own way of doing Jyotish, which is what I call embodied Vedic astrology. And it bridges the traditional uh, Vedic astrology wisdom that is rooted in healing and transformation and Dharma with embodiment, somatics, expressive art therapy. So that's what my course um, that I created this past year uh, is really rooted in. It, it's what I call embodied Vedic astrology. And this is my legacy offering. I mean, over a decade, I've cultivated this. Um, I've, I've curated it. I've taught many, many courses and, uh, you know, hundreds of clients from all over the world. And this is my legacy, what I call my legacy offering. So it was very scary to put this course out. And the fear, in fact, was so strong that I almost didn't do it. And um, I put it off for several years. Um, I realized that the fear of failure was very strong and it almost stopped me from moving forward. So that's my first reminder for you is to be working with the fear very diligently. When you're creating a dharmic offering, this is from your soul. This is an offering from your soul. So the stakes are higher. Uh, the fear of failure is stronger. The terror of being visible and seen, uh, sharing your gifts and wisdom, it's stronger with a dharmic offering. So first and foremost, I wanna invite you to be with the fear. Be 
in right relationship with the fear, accept, acknowledge the fear and work with it consciously. That is step number one for a successful launch. Every launch you do, big or small, the fear is going to come up. So you need to face it and you need to work with it consciously. I have my tools for that and I share a lot of resources uh, in my courses to work with the fear because it's here. It doesn't go away. Um, we cannot get rid of it. So the solution is how to be in right relationship with it. So I knew that if this course failed, if, if it flopped, if this launch wasn't successful, it would have been terrifying for me. Um, it would have affirmed a lot of the self-doubt and um, even the stories that I had been told for many years by other Jyotishis, um, the self-doubt, the inner critic, um, this was a huge, bold move for me, a huge declaration that my wisdom and my offerings have value, and I priced it accordingly. So this is another thing I invite you to really remember, that pricing your course will make or break your success and certainly your prosperity. If you undersell and you undervalue your offering, you will attract the wrong clients and you will not reach your financial goals. Underselling, undercharging does not help anyone. It doesn't help you and it actually doesn't help your client either. So having a really clear price point, it's so important. It, it sets the tone for the value of the course and the type of client that you attract. So be a leader lead by example, know your worth, know your value, and price your co course accordingly. Before I even launched the course, I prepared. This is a key piece of my $90,000 course success. Um, the preparation that went into this. Typically, I see people create courses and just throw it out there. They haven't done their market research, they don't even know if their audience wants this. They aren't languaging it properly. So the words that they're using aren't attractive. They don't reach the client who has this problem and the client doesn't realize you have the solution because the languaging is wrong. So before you even launch your course, you need to prep. And there's quite a bit of preparation that goes into a successful launch. And this could take months. So we have to go through the whole course creation process. That's something I teach in my Dharma mentorship and also in my Dharma foundations course. There's a very simple formula for it. But the marketing and the languaging and then pre-launch, that's a huge chunk of your success. And if you don't prepare properly, your course will flop. So pre-launch, for me, I started four months in advance. Um, I was dripping out content that was basically market research for my newsletter list, my Facebook group, my social media followers. I was dripping out content and testing my market to see is this what they want? Is there interest? What gets the most response? What gets the most likes, clicks? If I change the wording, does that get more of a response? What actually activates people to take action? So that's what I was doing in my uh, market research for months. And arguably, I've been in pre-launch for years because I've been sharing Jyotish knowledge and wisdom for many years. And I will see in my newsletter and even on social media, what gets the most traction. So that's what I was playing with um, content wise. I was dripping out content and sharing it in a way that I could test who's interested, what's the response. And that was really helpful for getting traction and also refining my marketing and messaging. So that was my whole pre-launch sequence 
which actually actually took four months um, in total. Another reason my course was so successful is that I used Jyotish to pick my dates for launching and closing, and even the dates for starting the course. So I was very strategic with my Mahertas to start the launch very auspiciously, to have the support of nature. Um, the extra support is something that we all need for a successful launch. If you start your launch without the support of nature, that is like swimming uphill. It is swimming upstream. It's going against the current. That is going to make your launch, your success harder. So we want as much ease and gentleness as possible for your business and for your body. And Jyotish gives us that. We can work with nature rather than working against it. And timing your launches with nature's support and using Jyotish for proper start times, close times, and even the start date of your course itself is exceedingly important. So remember that because I priced this course to reflect its value and my years of experience, I was able to more than cover my bottom line, even though everyone who joined this course was in a payment plan or is in a payment plan. It's okay, I still have reached my goals because I had the value of the course priced properly. So I'm okay with payment plans. I actually encourage payment plans. There's even a lot of reasons why a business runs better when people are the, the majority of your clients are on a payment plan. For one thing, it keeps revenue consistent and you know what to count on for the months ahead. So I really like payment plans for that reason. The other reason is tax purposes. It um, Rather than getting a lump sum of money and getting taxed on that all at once, if your clients are all on a payment plan, and let's say uh, for like this course, it started in 2023 and it continues through 2024, I don't have to pay taxes on the whole sum in one year. I'm breaking it up between 2023 and 2024. So I like payment plans for my clients. Um, I always encourage that. If that's the difference between someone stepping in and saying yes or I can't, um, we're going to make it happen with a payment plan. So everyone in the course um, joined with a payment plan. This was a $9,000 course and I... Join, I had 10 clients join this process. That's not a lot of people. 10 people in the course. And I made a 90K uh, profit. That's what I have made from this course. There wasn't a lot of upfront costs. There aren't a lot of business costs required to run this course. I teach one class a week. I'm paying a, a VA. I'm paying um, a support a, um, a TA, a, an assistant um, who helps me with classes, and I pay my guest teachers. I do have some back-end expenses, of course, running my business, um, but my business costs are actually quite low, and if you look at the costs of this course, very low costs overall. So I don't have a lot of business expenses and I do that on purpose because I'm creating a gentle, easy business model that is peaceful. In fact, volume will be a headache. More does not mean better and I can't overemphasize that. More clients, having a lot of clients to manage is not as peaceful as a few, a handful of a few amazing committed people who want to work with you and they know the value of your work. That's why I'm okay with my 10 people in this course. It's an intimate group. Everyone's 200% committed. They love the process. They're all in. And 
This ensures that we have a wonderful group and we all get what we need out of the process. And I can be more individual as well. I can work with these clients um, and support them on an individual level because uh, we don't have a large volume of people in the course. If I had tried to cram 30 people or more into this course at a lower price point in order to reach this, um, this 90K goal, then I wouldn't be able to give the same individual support to these clients. So I like smaller numbers, higher price point. That is something that I live by for my six-figure business success and for my business success, but also my body success. Uh, fewer clients, higher price point is the rule that I live by and what I use to grow my business. It keeps things peaceful and gentle so that I'm not managing massive volume and people that aren't fully committed to their process. And yes, the investment level that someone comes in at does often determine their level of commitment and willingness to grow and do the work. So keep that in mind. I only work about 20 hours a week. So that's another reason why I love a course structure to keep your business model simple and peaceful. I don't need a lot of clients and I don't have to work a lot of hours. I have other revenue streams going on in the background. So this course is one of several that I have in place. But I consider courses to be your bread and butter. And I really invite you to think about that for your bottom line, your business revenue. Um, your bread and butter should come from a course. And that way you have consistent revenue for um, many months at a time. And then you can have your extras going on in the background, maybe an entry level offer, maybe a high ticket offer, but your mid-level offering is what sustains your business and keeps you satisfied, content, revenues flowing, your needs are taken care of, and you're not having to work really hard for it. Um, the more courses you do, the easier this gets. And if you know your knowledge and wisdom and you have created an impeccable course, this doesn't require a lot of work outside of class. Um, again, I work about 20 hours a week. When I'm not in class or I'm not doing private sessions with my clients, I'm working on content and I'm following up with emails. That's it. That's what I'm doing. Um, I would say half of my time is actually content and emails. The rest of my time is actively in class with clients or in session with clients or having um, clarity calls with potential new clients. So most, I would say half of, I spend my time half and half, um, but the majority of my time is actually behind the scenes quietly working on content, uh, tracking numbers, things like that. So the way that I made this happen, and this these are the nuts and the bolts of my 90K launch. I launched this predominantly through my newsletter, through social media. Oops, somehow Siri came on. Bye Siri. <laughs> so I launched this course through my newsletter list. And again, I don't have a huge newsletter list um, through social media. I don't have a huge following on social media. Um, I did lives every week. I do this live. That's a big part of how I promote myself and my offerings here in the Facebook group, also on Instagram and YouTube. Uh, I also did collaboration and referral processes behind the scenes. So reaching out to my guest teachers, asking them to do some promotion um, as well. And I did personal outreach to past clients who I really wanted to work with 
That's how this paid off. The content I created motivated and activated my ideal client. So I was very strategic with this content. Remember, that was part of my pre-launch market research that I was doing in order to refine my marketing and messaging. My call to action was clear and focused every time. Sign up with me, work with me, um, join the course. Sorry guys, I just lost my earbud. Wow, so bizarre. I can't find it. Um, can Will you tell me if you can hear me? Lamore, if you're there, uh, can you hear me? I have one earbud in. Hopefully you can still hear me. Okay, let's keep going. This is a strange little... So, uh, like I said, clear call to action. My call to action was clear and focused every time. That's something that you need in your content constantly. Every piece of content you put out should have a clear call to action. Um, I also proved to my clients exactly how they would get an ROI, a return on this investment. This is a significant investment and I wanted them to know how they were gonna get a return. We even built that into the course, how they were gonna get a return on this investment dollar for dollar. And they were doing it through uh, their private sessions and sharing their knowledge and wisdom. And we came up with a plan for that so they could track it and see how they would uh, remake this money back that they were actually uh, spending on the course. And um, we could prove that they would get this, this investment back through the work that they're doing uh, with their own clients. My focus was also on having personal conversations uh, with, with people that I wanted to work with and not being salesy. So this is an educational experience. That's how I do my sales conversations is education. And it's not pushy, it's not forced. It's let's see if this is a good fit for you. and weigh the solutions and the problems that they have and how this will solve their problems. So you need to know this inside and out, how you solve the problem that your client has and why your course is their solution. You should be able to name that so clearly. What is the problem that they have? Be able to name it with precision and how does your course solve this problem? I don't wanna pretend like this was an easy process. It wasn't. It took a lot of emotional st strength and perseverance to reach the finish line and to actually uh, reach this 90K launch and to be successful, but it was worth it. I didn't give up because I wanted it so bad and I'm so glad that I didn't. Um, here are my reminders for your launch process. Pre-launch for months, do your market research. Price your course properly. It's everything I've already shared about that. Don't undersell. Carefully curate your content. Again, this is also part of your market research process. Ask others to help you. Have a solid referral process in place. Offer payment plans. Don't give up. Here are my other reminders for you. This is how I did it. I faced my fear and I actively built a relationship with the fear. Remember, this was a big launch for me, terrifying in many ways. And I had to work with the fear consciously in order to really be successful. The fear doesn't go away. Build a relationship with it, work with it consciously. One of my favorite tools for working with fear is beyond somatic and embodiment work is tapping, doing EFT. I tapped every day through this process. 
Don't forget Jyotish. Jyotish is essential for right timing and making sure that your course will be successful. We want to know that we're starting on the right foot. We have nature support. Also ancestral guidance and support. I needed the guidance from my ancestors in order to even launch this. This was a Dharmic offering and I wouldn't have even been able to do this without their guidance, their wisdom and support. They were encouraging me. And when the doubters and the critics are really strong, we can come back to our ancestral guidance and wisdom and seek refuge, solace and support through them. So ancestral guidance and support, especially when it's a Dharmic offering, it's non-negotiable. The other reminder, I just want to end with this, don't give up. If you believe in your course, if you believe in your offerings, your medicine, your wisdom, your tools, don't give up. This is between you and your ancestors, ultimately, and you and your soul sharing your gifts and wisdom in this world, your dharma. Don't give up. We need strategy. We need tools. We need to be smart with our launch. And we need to know how to set ourselves up for success. And work with the fear. Use Jyotish, align with your ancestors in order for support. If you would like a $90,000 course launch, work with me. Let's do Dharma Mentorship together and make sure that your next course is a huge success when you launch. I have several openings right now for private mentorship work. Comment mentorship below and I will send you all the details. We'll have a chat. We'll see if this is the right process for you. Streamline your offerings, refine, really improve your marketing and messaging and make sure that you're doing your launch process properly. If you're ready for a 90K course launch, jump in. Let's work together. I would love to walk with you in your process of success. Comment mentorship below and I'll follow up with you. Let's have a chat. We'll see how I can support you in your course success. All right, everyone. I hope this was helpful for you today. Remember, it's easier than you think to launch a successful course if you have the right tools, strategies, and formula in place. Bye, everyone.